All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week, had a good weekend, all that good stuff. It was a very insane week in the stock market. Monday, first thing, we opened up with a very heavy gap down. VIX almost hit 70, and that was the third largest VIX spike in history. So it's just below the COVID 2020 crash spike. It was just below 2008 financial crisis spike, and it was literally just from one gap down on Monday. Kind of just shows you how sensitive the market is right now. And really, it was just a mix of the Friday labor data report, the non-farm payrolls, and also the unemployment tick up. And then we also had Japan kind of freak out Sunday night as well. Their stock indexes crashed like 12% overnight. So that was just crazy. There was a lot going on Sunday night that brought us down as well. So I feel like it was a mix of the labor data on Friday and also Japan on Sunday night. But overall, we did kind of grind back up. We really didn't see like any new lows after Monday. That's where it kind of ended. VIX came back down. So it was just very crazy. I mean, I feel like it caught a lot of people off guard. I'm sure it probably liquidated a lot of people too some margin calls who knows but if you tuned in last week we had a pretty good list we did have crowd calls on watch so we're looking at CrowdStrike that actually gave a really good entry at the ground floor first thing Monday. Gap down almost probably like 10% and then recovered the whole thing and even rallied the rest of the week. So crowd did really good. Hopefully you're able to get an entry on that. The setup was really simple on that one. We're looking for a one week 200 EMA bounce and also a dead cap bounce on the one day RSI was low. So lots of things going for crowd for it to dead cap bounce like that. And we did see that exactly. So hopefully you caught that one. That was a pretty good setup and that one played out very nice. We also had Tesla calls on watch that did okay. We were looking for either a 50% Fibonacci bounce or we were looking for that 61.8% bounce. We did gap down Monday, all the indexes, everything gapped down. And instead of the 50%, which we were looking at last Sunday night, it ended up gapping down into the 61.8 and bouncing from that first thing Monday, had a nice little gap fill play. We were only looking at scalps or day trades on that one. So I wasn't really like looking for a swing or to load up for further date expiration or anything like that. So Monday, you're probably able to catch a little bit on that. And then the rest of the week, uh, Tesla was very slow. So Tesla didn't really do much, unfortunately. And it kind of did stay range bound after the Monday gap down. And after the little recovery it had, it kind of stayed within a range. So it didn't really give too much, but the Monday entry was pretty good. I mean, it was a really nice bounce. We also had those Apple puts on watch. So Apple actually gapped down very aggressively. I feel like it opened down maybe almost like 8%. And it basically recovered half or more first thing at the open. I mean, the gap down was so aggressive. I feel like it just brought a lot of people in to buy the dip. Volatility kind of sold back off aggressively because the VIX was at 65. So it was just crazy, guys. So Apple, we really didn't get an entry because the first thing Monday opened down so aggressive. It already hit the price targets we were looking for. So I was just a tad bit too late to look at Apple there. Maybe if we saw that trend line breaking on Thursday, go Going into Friday and we entered the puts on Thursday, we would have had a very big put trade to the downside that paid a lot. But unfortunately, we looked at it Sunday night and it dumped so hard, there's no way to really get in. So I did not trade Apple puts at all last week, just gapped down too much for me. I was looking for an entry, but overall volatility kind of came back down. So I didn't enter any puts or anything after the VIX came down a little bit more aggressively. And for trades last week, it was actually a pretty good week. I took it pretty slow. I did a lot of futures trading last week, less options. So first thing Monday here, we took a SPY 515 call scalp. We made 32% on that. The zero days this day was very weird. Like we were moving like four or $5 on SPY and the contracts are only paying like a hundred bucks a piece just due to the high VIX, high implied volatility. The premium sucked this week on a lot of things. And that resulted in me trading less options and doing more futures scalping, which I'm fine with paying the fees on, even though I don't pay fees on options, I'm okay with paying the fees on futures given how much the premiums have sucked. We also took a TLT 100 put position. I think we opened this on Tuesday and we basically top ticked it, played out pretty good, came down over the next few days and we made 32% on that. We also took snap calls. So we took snap at the lows, looking pretty nice, looking for a dead cap bounce on that, made 30% on that one. I'm actually still in a partial position on snap. Hopefully we can get to $10 eventually. And if you are still interested, Snap is actually a pretty good long-term grab right now. If you want to grab shares, it's actually at a pretty low point right now. RSI was at the lowest it's ever been on the one-day chart. So that's why we took Snap, made a nice little gain on that. And last but not least, we also took a TLT 95 call swing. So the opposite of the trade we took on Tuesday. TLT pulled into the one-day 921 EMA. Also a nice back test level. We bought there, sold on the gap up the next day, 33%. So pretty good week. 
no losses, but less trades, less day trades too. I took more longer dated stuff. As you can see, the TLT snap had two months, TLT had a month, and then that one zero day call on Monday. We also did open a put credit spread on the $300 challenge account. If you're still interested in following that, I'll post a screenshot here. We are up to 662, which is not bad from 300 bucks, just doing low risk spread plays. It's about 120% return in less than a year. So not bad. I wish we were up in more dollars, but the percentage gain is pretty nice. So we can get it to a thousand by the end of the year. But right now, all cash on the $300 challenge. All right, let's go ahead and get over our economic calendar for the week. We do have PPI on Monday. This is the producer price index. We've actually had PPI after CPI the past couple months. So it's kind of weird that PPI is going to be before the CPI, but that's how it's going this week. So definitely pay attention to that on Tuesday. That might give a hint into the CPI. So I feel like that will cause a Pretty big knee-jerk reaction with however it goes. You want to see that continued trend in inflation go lower. And then on Wednesday, the big one of the week, we do have the CPI. Same thing as PPI. We want to see that continued trend in inflation lower. It looks like the estimate is at 3% for year over year. And then core CPI year over year is going to be 3.2 and core CPI at a 0.2%. So that is the forecast. We want to see maybe in line, so right at 3%, maybe a tick below it at 2.9. That would be great. I would prefer to see it below estimate, but you never know. Sometimes the market likes it when it comes directly in line as well. So if it came in at 3%, that would be potentially good as well. It just depends. The markets are crazy, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then on Thursday, we do have initial jobless claims. So actually, this was pretty important last week because we had that crappy non-farm payrolls data and unemployment tick up. So a lot of people were paying attention to initial jobless claims this Thursday, and that caused a big rally in the market when it really wasn't that severe. So we definitely want to pay attention to that on Thursday. Good news is good news. Bad news is bad news right now. We also have the Philadelphia Fed manufacturing survey. This can move the market. It really just depends. The most important is going to be the retail sales and the initial jobless claims. So definitely keep a watch on those two. Those are kind of the important ones on Thursday. And then on Friday, consumer sentiment, that can be a pretty big mover. Definitely will cause a knee jerk reaction in the intraday session. And before we get into our setups, we'll go ahead and go over the seasonality real quick. Last week was pretty boring. We didn't really have a big up thrust or kind of a big down move or anything last week. For this week, we actually do have the 20 year data set at 60% winning trades to the long side with a summarized profit at 2%, so a little bit bullish. And then for the 10 year, we have winning trades at 70% to the long side with a summarized profit of 1%. So nothing too special, but a little bit of a bullish tilt over the last 10 years for this seasonality period. So neutral bullish with all the volatility and all the data coming out this week, there's really only so much seasonality can do for you. According to history, we are kind of having a chill week historically for this week specifically. I don't think it will be chill with the CPI coming out. I think there's going to be a lot of volatility, kind of like a hangover session from last week because last week was so big and given how tight volatility has been, that 65 explosion in the VIX really just kind of threw a lot of people off. That's for seasonality. Like I said, 60% winning trades for the 20 year, 70% for the 10 year. All right, and on to our setups for the week. It's going to be very boring this week. I had a really hard time finding setups, so this week is going to be pretty chill on the setups. I don't have three for you this week. It's very hard to find setups. Like I said, there's really only one swing setup I'm looking at right now, and that's on UNG here. We have a nice little kind of third test to bounce here off this lower trend line. We also have a reclaim of 1387, which is a major low right here, kind of a short term bounce point right here as well. And it flushed once it broke right here. So this 1387 low is pretty big. We also have MACD that's positive. So that's a good sign. We're not really closed over the one day 921 EMA cloud just yet, but it's getting close. And I feel like the natural gas futures are up a little bit tonight. So maybe we can get over that cloud tomorrow. We'll have to see. But I really like how this is setting up. We actually were looking at UNG all the way back here when this wedge was set up. And I mentioned calls were a good look right here. And this thing just totally ripped. So this is a really good setup the last time we looked at it. We don't really see a wedge this time. Not as clean as it was last time. We do kind of have a little downtrend going on right here that we broke out of. So that's a good sign. It's just not like a falling wedge like the last time that's as clean. And I'm not sure if it's going to go as high as it did last time either. But it looks decent. I like it. Probably looking at September, October calls. Natural gas has just been getting its ass beat for a long time. And it's really nice to play the dead cap bounces because this thing can really run. So UNG looking at calls. Longer dated 
be patient. Make sure it stays over 1387 on the short term. And on the more medium term, you probably want to watch 1258. If it starts flushing that 1258 or this little lower trend line, it's probably time to look at something else. All right, number two, you guys are probably going to hate me for this one, but we're looking at NVIDIA here. The reason why you're probably going to hate me is because I'm going to look at puts, but not for a swing or anything. I'm going to look at put scalps on this just due to the fact that we're now back at the 921 EMA cloud. It's been a pretty strong resistance right here. Also at a big rejection candle right here. We don't really have a big confirmation that this will go lower. Naturally, I kind of do want to look for resistance at this cloud, whether it wants to go a little bit higher and get up to the 21 EMA part of the cloud, which would be right here. We could look for rejections right there as well. Let's just say we gapped up on Monday and we were all the way up at the 21 EMA already. We could look for resistance there. The 50 SMA or the 50 EMA meets there as well. So that's another confluence area. You could look for resistance, assuming it gets up there. And then assuming it stays down here as well and stays below the non I do like the probability of it flushing back down to that 97.40, maybe even just $100 just to keep it simple because 100 is probably a pretty good psychological level. So $100 to 97.40. 97.40 comes from this previous resistance. It's also a new kind of back test. You can see this big daily bar right here did test 97.40 and ripped off of that right there. So shorting NVIDIA is very risky. I don't really like doing overnight swings on NVIDIA puts or anything like that because it's such a big mover. It's a little bit riskier, but doing scalps I'm okay with. I think we did an NVIDIA scalp for puts back here. Yeah, right here about 11 days ago. Just made a little 22%. So I'm not shooting for the stars or shooting for hell that much lower. I'm just playing it conservative looking at this 921 cloud. We have the indexes at the 921 cloud as well. So I'm a little bit skeptical for now, for longs at least. One good thing though, VIX is back below the 21s and the 23 level. We're focused on this 23 and we'll go over that later. We are back under that, so that's a good sign. But Nvidia still could have some natural resistance here at the 921 cloud. And like I said, even if it gets up to the 21 and the 50 EMA area, that's another area I would look for a flush, some kind of rejection to go lower. So we're either looking at a flush at this area assuming we open flat or waiting for it to get up to the 21 at the 50 EMA as well up at this 112s, 110 or so. So that's for NVIDIA looking at put scalps, not a put swing, just put scalps. Gonna get in, get out, maybe 15, 30 minutes max, not hold overnight, etc. All right, and onto the indexes already. Since we only had two this week, uh, we're kind of getting over this video a little bit quicker. So bear with me here. I'm sorry, it's probably not gonna be as interesting as last week. I don't have as many setups, but we'll still try to make some money, try to look at some good levels that we can react off of. So for SPY last week, here was our Friday's close. This is the Monday gap down, very aggressive. We had 533.07. We also had 524.61 and 518.36. So we really needed this 533 to hold. I mentioned if that didn't hold, it would be a little bit riskier. And you probably want to wait for, you know, 524s or 518s if that 533 didn't hold. So we kind of did get that. Once we started closing back over 518.36 right here, so that was this little pivot low, that really did set us up for some decent upside. Once we reclaimed it, there was really some nice scalps to the upside. You can see a really nice velocity to the upside here above 518. You have another kind of back test or support hold is 518s right here. You have a pretty big velocity over 524.61 right here as well. You have another pullback into 518.36, turn into a pretty nice gap up and rally to the upside. So our levels played out pretty good. You just kind of have to decide what you want to do with them. I can only kind of give you the levels to mark because you could do so many different things with them. Like you could use you know, 533 as resistance. If it's trending below, you could use 524 as support. You could use 518 as support. You could also use 524.60s as resistance, kind of like what it did at this general area right here. Obviously, it didn't hit directly, but there's so many things you can do with one day levels to kind of day trade off of. So I didn't open any swing trades last week on SPY, except for that put credit spread on the challenge account, like I told you. And we closed that for, I think, like a $40 win or something like that. So the put credit spreads were really the way to go because the premiums were so jacked up. It was so messed up. There's people, you know, entering on Monday and it would rally and they would be red. 
So options are literally the only asset you can be right and still lose. It's a scam. So you got to treat them like hot potatoes sometime and really be selective about where you're buying them just due to volatility, especially when the VIX is up to 65 and it's at a, basically the third highest level it's ever been. You want to be very careful getting in SPY, getting in large caps that have very elevated implied volatility. So yeah, for this week, we're definitely going to watch the same levels. We have 533. So we basically closed at last Friday's. We also have the 921 cloud here and also the 50 EMA right here. So this can be resistance guys. Like you gotta be careful kind of buying inside the cloud. I can show you many examples of, you know, just price rejecting the 921 cloud when we're below it. You have a pretty big rejection right here. You have a rejection right here. So you gotta be careful buying inside of it or going long inside the cloud. And that makes me a little bit skeptical. If we keep holding under 533, I'm probably gonna, you know, start shooting for 524 again, stuff like that. But if we open over 5 33 and we start closing over 533 there's a little bit more hope you can kind of see the 50 ema and also the 21 ema part of the cloud they're at the same spot right now so overall eventually spy is gonna have to get over 540 to kind of get back above the moving averages get back within a trend and kind of put all this behind it so don't change your levels from last week if you mark them it's still 53307 it's still 52461 and it's still 51836 we do have a new low right here you can mark at 51027 and that's really about it i'm probably not going to look at longs in in the spy or the qqq just due to the fact that we're at the cloud now I would probably want to see it getting back over the cloud before I'm going long inside of this. So really for max upside right now, I could really only project up to the 50 EMA and the 921, you know, the 21 EMA part of the cloud. It's about 538. So you got about six points maybe before you hit that. And that also closes the gap right here. So about 539 to 540. That's probably the max upside I could project assuming we stay over 533. And 533 is an old resistance and also support level right here. So that 533 is pretty important. Probably needs to get over that. And like I said, max upside, you know, 540, 539. I'm really kind of looking for more put scalps. The same thing on NVIDIA, especially at this cloud. I feel like there's going to be a pretty big rejection at some point. So that's for SPY. Just keep those 533, 524s, 518s, and the new 510 marked. It's probably going to come in handy next week if we stay under 533. Probably going to want to shoot back down to 524s and then just watch that 50 EMA and the 21 EMA at the 539s to 540. All right, and on to QQQ. So this one actually closed here on Friday. So we already had a trend line breaking on Friday. So we marked this trend line a couple weeks ago. Had a pretty good bounce short term right here a couple weeks ago when we were looking at it and then closed under here on Friday. So Sunday night, we kind of already knew that we were below trend, but I was kind of having a little bit of hope because the futures weren't down too much yet. I think they were down like 1% or something. We weren't really flushing any serious levels until the overnight session, you know, in the middle of the night. That's when it got very severe. And really, we were just looking at the 450 level or the 449.30s, which is this back test. We wanted to see it getting back over that. And we also have 443.06. Those are the only two levels I have marked. And I mentioned if that 443 broke, we'd probably go down to the 200 EMA. And you'd probably want to look for dip buys at that area. The 200 EMA is a pretty good spot to look for a load up. And we actually got to below the 200 EMA but we closed back over it here on Monday. All this week we held, we held the 200 EMA here. This big red bar held the 200 EMA and also had a nice little rally here on Thursday on the initial jobless claims data. So the 200 EMA held. There's also another little trend line actually I can show you. So if you go all the way back here and we start from here and we go to this, you have a test one, a test two, and here's basically a test three bounce off of that trend line. So that's another way to look at it all the way from January 23 lows to October lows. That's your two points that met for a potential bounce off the third point right here. So that was another way to look at last week. We also had a pretty good rejection here off the 449.34. So you could have played off of that as well. Like I said, I can give you these levels, but what you do with them, you kind of have to decide for yourself. You can use, you know, old support as new resistance, like kind of like this. So that 449.34 would have came in handy right here. Uh, you have a couple rejections off it right here as well. So you could have scalped off of this. So yeah, for NASDAQ and QQQ, my outlook this week is still a little bit kind of sketched out just due to the fact that the 921 cloud, we're still trending under it. We could pull a move like this where we start trading inside the cloud and then we won't reject until the 21 EMA part. That's kind of what I was saying about NVIDIA. We could wait for the 21 EMA to tap as well if we start trading inside the cloud. And that's really about it. 
So that's one way to look at it. You could also wait for it to get to the downtrend line before going short. So if you want to wait for it to get here, you could do that as well. So yeah, that's really it, guys. I don't really have too much for you. It's kind of a wait and see week because we're at the cloud now on the SPY and the QQQ, also NVIDIA at the 921 cloud as well. So we kind of have to see if it's going to reject here or if we're going to start trading inside of it. And it really will depend on the PPI and the CPI. So, and like I said, it was really hard for me to find setups this week. But overall on the SPY and QQQ, I'm probably going to start looking for resistance at some point, especially now that we're at this cloud. It's a little bit riskier to go long once it's inside the cloud. And we also have the MACDs negative as well. So SPY, QQQ, MACDs are still staying negative. Probably needs to cross back up before we're starting to look at longs on that one as well, at least for your swing trades. You want to see clean trends like this. It's the cleanest way to go about it. You want price getting over the EMAs. That gives you everything you want to see for upside. And it's the reverse for downside. So we're trending under the 921 cloud. We're trending under the 50 EMA. The one thing we did have was a nice discount zone at the 200 EMA. So just keep the same levels. If QQQ starts falling back under 450, I would say it's a pretty good scalp to short to the downside. It's kind of like the SPY 533. If it starts flushing the 533s and rejecting aggressively, it's a pretty good put scalp in my opinion. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over the VIX. So this is what I was saying about VIX getting all the way to 65. It was just insane guys i mean this is the third highest spike ever in history and that's all just from one bad trading day in japan and one bad labor market report from the non-farm payrolls on friday so a very sensitive market obviously if that one day can just cause this and it's not even close to being as big as the financial crisis or as big as covid that says a lot so big overreaction as we can see from volatility came all the way from 65 back down to the 20s so our level of focus last week was just 2308 and right now we did close under 2308 and 2136 so that was this and this right here so that was the october lows and also the april lows spike right here as well and that's really all you should pay attention to on vix this week if it stays under that 2136 there's a good chance volatility will keep flushing lower we probably do need to get under the 921 cloud as you can see it's been holding the cloud and bouncing off of it so as long as the 21 to 36 zone is not holding as a back test and bouncing off it again the downside shouldn't be too bad but if it starts getting back over that and bouncing off this 921 EMA, that is some risk. But overall, a nice close last week on the VIX. Also closed under the 23 and the 2136. So for right now, I don't really see a big reason to pull back unless Monday. We do kind of just get back over it and it starts kind of bouncing there. That could bring in some worry and you'll probably see 533 flush. You'll see QQQ back under 450 and trying to flush to the downside again, uh, rejecting off of those clouds. And as you guys know, I'm very skeptical in August and September. I've been pretty much pounding the table about if you're going to buy the dip in this, really only take a nibble. Dip your toe in with a very small amount because in September, you might be able to get a better discount anyways at a new low. So I'm not exactly sure if that's going to happen, but the past four or five years, if you've been trading, September has had a very low point and where you can find discounts and buy the dip for October, November, December when the market does really good. So that's kind of been my preaching for the past couple of weeks. Less is more in this market. So even though you're not sizing big, the swings are pretty big. So you can still get paid decent, even though you're not taking big risk. But yeah, I really want to wait and see with the market. Like I said, SPY QQQ at the 921 cloud, we can definitely reject off of it. Probably depends on the VIX as well. You need VIX back over 23. I would like to see that. Maybe I can get a short in the market. And overall, until we're kind of outside of the clouds and getting out of the downtrend and stuff like that, I'm a little bit skeptical of longs. You guys know I like the value area. So, you know, at the 200 EMA down here for SPY, you know, I like the 518s, so that 518 we have marked, that's a good discount area. We also have the new 510 lows, so that's a good discount area. But adding directly at the cloud, I do not go long inside the cloud. So I could be wrong, could gap up, could just trade right through the cloud, keep going up. But history has shown the best area to add is not inside the cloud. And that's why I think it could see a little bit of resistance, assuming that the VIX can get back over the 21s and the 23. And that's really it, guys. I don't really have any major levels or anything like that on the VIX other than this 2136 and the 2308. You could mark this little 1571 low as well. That was kind of a little base out area right there. This big candle really messed things up. Makes it a little bit harder to chart and see, but that 1571 is an obvious kind of pivot level. So maybe 2136, staying under that will take you back to the 15s. I would like to see a little bit more downside in the market. Definitely get that discount for September. I feel like we're not really at a good spot to dip by just yet. Maybe last week, like I said, Monday was a really good day 
for dip buying, especially on that crowd. Looking at crowd strike last week, that had a great recovery. There was a lot of things that bounced pretty aggressively for a dead cat bounce. That's kind of how I'm treating the market, just dead cat bounces. Very short term. You saw it last week. We took snap calls. We took profit pretty quick, holding a partial on that. Same thing on TLT. TLT sold off aggressively, sold on the first aggressive pop to the upside. And yeah, just day trading less, being a little bit more careful. And yeah, that's really all I got for you guys this week. My computer is running very low, so I love you. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. And I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today, completely free of charge.